Welcome to Strength of Materials, Simple Stress and Strain. In this video, we will be going through St. Venant's principle. This is the next principle of the stress and strain part for the particular strength of materials. So, we will be going through St. Venant's principle. In 1855, the French elastic theorist Adam Jane Cloud Berry D. St. Venant stated that difference between the effects of two different but statically equivalent loads means difference between the effects of two different but statically equivalent loads becomes very small at a sufficiently large distances from the load. So, the stresses and strains in a body at points that are sufficiently remote from points of application of load depend only on the static resultant of the loads and not on the distribution of loads. This is the St. Venant's principle. How we can say means this particular body, the particular force is going to act. This is the two different but statically equivalent loads are force acting in this particular section. So, when we see one fourth of the section or half of the section, that time what will be happening? We will be able to see this particular stress diagram. This is the stress average. The rectangular dotted box is going to show us the average stress. Whereas, actual plot is we are not able to see the stress in the edges. We are able to see the maximum stress where the exact point load is going to act or where the load is going to act. There we will be seeing the stresses in the particular members. So, when we go on increasing the particular uh, length of the member, that time we can see the stress becomes as a rectangular near to average stress. So, this is the particular part of concentration of stress. So, stress concentration is increase in stress along the cross section that may be caused by a point load or by any other discontinuity such as a hole which brings about a abrupt change in the cross-sectional area. So, to be so simple, if this is a point load and it is acting on a particular surface, we are able to see that when we try it, we are able to see that how the load is acting at the exactly concentrated point. But this surface area, whatever it is acting, it is not going to get undated or getting any different stresses at the surface where it is going to act. So, now this point we can say that the stress concentration is a increase in the stress along the cross section. So, cross section if we increase this part of cross section if we increase the stress is also going to increase. So, because the stress distribution will be going as per the particular loading. Now, in this part the stress distribution is not there. Whereas, here the stress distribution is easily happening and this particular part is going to take the stresses also. So, this is the St. Venant's principal part. In this further part, uh, experiment which uh, we fix two strain gauges, one near the central portion of the specimen and one near the grip of the UTM. So, this we usually try to do in the tension test of our uh, laboratory, but let us see whether strain gauges are available for the fixing up and we the same figure is going to get the stresses. The respective strain gauges values obtained from both the gauges are measured and then plotted with the respect to time. Okay. Since stress is proportional to strain as per St. Venant's principle, the stress will be concentrated near the point of application of load itself only. Then, although the average stress along the new uniform cross section remains constant at the point of application of load, the load stress is distributed as shown in the figure below, with B stress being concentrated at a load point. So, we can see the stress is concentrated at a 
particular load point itself there is no other stresses which are going to act so this we can say here the stress is going to act at this particular point wherein this is going to have the more amount of stress concentration further the distance from the point of load of application the more uniform stress is distributed across the cross section so when the load is acting if the cross section length is increasing that time we can say this particular stress concentration will be more uniform uniform means it is getting distributed throughout the whole cross section and it will become as an average stress is acting now the second part after the saint venant's theory is the temperature stresses so how the temperature stresses are going to act how the human body is going to react with the different types of temperatures such as rain is there then summer is there then winter is there we try to get shrink in the winter and we try to get expand in the summer similarly members or materials do the same as in summer they may get expand or contract or in winter they may get expand or contract so the example of a simple material we can see a black cotton soil a black cotton soil in winter it gets when the rain comes it gets expansion so it there is a movement of the materials the particles are going to increase their sizes in the same way if there is a summer the same black cotton soil will become into the shrinkaged part and there will be a cracks in their uniform body so this type of temperature stresses are going to act into the normal building structures and different elements of the buildings also so let us see how those stresses are going to change the stress and strain part the length of a material which undergoes a change in temperature also changes and if the material is free to do so i repeat the length of a material which undergoes a change in temperature also changes also changes and if the material is free to do so no stresses are developed in the material now if we are taking a material and we see that it will be getting expanded when it is required it will be getting shrinked when it is required then that time there are no stresses are developed then when the stresses will be developed so why these are called as temperature stresses when the stresses will be developed however if the material is constrained we are fixing it now in building we can see every material is fixed every element is fixed if that way if we are going to do that moment will be what it will be going to have the development of stress one end is totally fixed and if the body is totally fixed at both the ends and the stresses are acting due to the temperature changes that time it will be having a small amount of expansion in its body or there will be a contraction in its body that time we can say some temperature stresses are developed so stresses are developed in the material when the material is constrained those stresses are known as temperature stresses or thermal stresses consider a bar of a length l capital like this we can say this is the particular bar length of a country l and we can say when the temperature stresses are allowed to develop anything without any constraints so we can see this as the delta it is going to increase or it is going to reduce so it is free now at one end it can be increasing in its length because of expansion or it may be decreasing in its length because of contraction so this is the part if we allow without any constraints and if we fix two points if the constraints are available what happens if the it is temperature stresses increased to t degree centigrade if its temperature stresses is increased to t degree centigrade its length is increased by an amount its length is increased by an amount of l alpha t l is length t is the temperature 
in the uh, atmosphere and alpha is a coefficient of thermal expansion there will be a coefficient which will be giving us how much amount it is going to increase the part of the length that coefficient of thermal expansion is alpha this is for the free bar which is allowed to get the uh, increase in the length or shape or size but there will not be any kind of stresses but if the bar is constrained and is prevented from expansion the temperature stress is induced now when if we are not allowing it to move further in its length or not allowing to move to decrease in its length then the temperature stresses are induced by which the material is given by delta so now this delta comes into this picture here we are able to see the delta now how the delta is going to get that is free expansion is what l alpha into 2 that is nothing but the free expansion equals to what stress divided by l upon e so delta is what change in length change in length is given by how stress multiplied by length divided by e young's modulus that is strain multiplied by length we are going to take strain is stress upon e length is original length l or we can say stress is equals to alpha t e so now here l and l gets cancelled when we see the stress temperature stress sigma is in terms of alpha t multiplied by e so this is the stress which can be induced in the temperature stresses when the material is constrained so temperature strain is how e is equals to e is equals to stress upon e stress upon e what is stress stress is alpha t e divided by e so e and e gets cancelled so remaining only temperature strain will be alpha into t coefficient of the thermal expansion multiplied by the temperature is the temperature strain temperature stresses are developed if a material is prevented from expansion which is l alpha t in case a uh, supports yield or is unable to prevent the expansion completely then if the yield is alpha means temperature stresses are developed if the material is prevented from the expansion which is alpha l alpha t in case support yields support is moving or is unable to prevent the expansion completely then if the yield is what the increase is that increase is a okay what will be the equation so this can we see fixity fixity there is an increase of length a yield is a that time we can say this particular part as delta is equals to we need to decrease that to come into original part so that is change in length delta okay uh, l alpha t minus a into bracket which is equals to stress upon l stress into l divided by e so this part if we rewrite in terms other than so stress will be equals to l alpha t minus a into e divided by l is the equation if a bar is of a tapering section then if the bar is of a tapering section so in this part if there is a temperature stresses going to act what we can do so in a bar of tapering sections we can see that the particular changes the elongation delta which is in the tapering bar which we already know 4 p l by pi e small d and capital d which is small d this is small d this is the capital d that is the total particular diameter of the particular section now what is the particular change in the stress therefore delta is equals to l alpha t 4 p l so that is pi e d by d or p is equals to alpha t pi e d capital d divided by 4 l and l gets cancelled 
stress at any cross section that is any cross section we can say this part p by a okay that will be alpha t pi e small d capital d divided by 4 times a where a is the area of the cross section clear so stress is p t um, force is p t alpha t pi e d capital D divided by 4 this part capital P it is stress will be P by E sigma is this part okay maximum stress will be at a section with a minimum diameter when the minimum diameter is there there will be the maximum stress so thus maximum will be equal to alpha T pi E D capital D divided by 4 times pi d square by 4 pi d square by 4 so here small d and and one more small d gets cancelled pi pi gets cancelled denominator of 4 goes on the upper side 4 4 gets cancelled so thus remaining for sigma max that is stress maximum will be alpha t capital e capital d divided by 4 that is the maximum stress in the tapered bar section clear hope so it is so clear for bars of a uniform cross section d is equals to capital d and thus stress sigma is equals to alpha t e as before as earlier the first part okay for the uniform section for the composite bars now there were only some one single bar was there now it will be two bars two bars of two different materials this is one material, this is one material. There are two different materials. Okay. Now, two different materials, how they will be having the temperature stresses. Let the composite bar be heated through some temperature. If the bars are free to expand, then no stresses will be induced. In, we can say that the particular members are free to expand. Then there are no stresses in the members. But two members are rigidly fixed and hence composite bars as a whole will expand by the same amount. So we can say when there is a change in the temperature, if one expansion is going because of restrainment, only one bar will not have the increase. There will be simultaneously both bars will be having the expansions. So that both the bars will be having the same expansion that we have to see that. As the coefficient of linear expansion of a brass or more than that of a steel, both members are not free to expand. Hence, the expansion of the composite bar as a whole will be less than that of the brass. Means, coefficient of linear expansion for a brass member is more than that of the steel. So, steel is having less, but both the members are free to expand and hence, expansion of composite bars as a whole will be less than that of the brass means whatever the expansion is going to take place that will be very much less less than the brass increasing or but more than the steel okay so steel is less and that is more hence the stress induced in the brass will be compressive whereas the stress in the steel will be increased at tensile now the most important this is brass this is steel okay linear expansion of brass is more than that of steel this will be increasing more this will be decreasing uh, increasing less okay because of steel now when temperature is going to act this can be increased more so when it is fixed it will be having the particular part of compression stress compression will be acting on this to come at this place and there will be tension forces acting in this particular member in the steel part so this is steel which is increasing so there will be a tension in steel compression in the brass then they will be both at the same place okay hence the load or a force on the brass will be compressive whereas on the steel will be load as a tensile okay so this part is the figure okay brass steel brass steel so brass when it is going to increase to come at the same level we can see but brass will be coming into the compression compression part steel will be going for expansion that is tension part this was the particular figure okay 
temperature stresses let a b area of cross section of brass bar sigma b stress in the brass e b strain in the brass a b coefficient of linear expansion of brass that is alpha b not a b alpha b coefficient of linear expansion of brass capital e b young's modulus of brass similarly for the steel values also as area of cross section of steel bar sigma s stress in steel bar e s strain in steel bar alpha s coefficient of linear expansion in steel e s young's modulus of steel okay actual expansion of the composite bar is equals to delta actual example expansion we will take it as delta on the brass will be load on the brass will be stress in the brass multiplied by area of brass what is the stress in the brass sigma area of brass a sigma b into a b and steel sigma s a s so when we are taking for the equilibrium system compression in the copper should be equal to tension in the steel so compression is to be same and tension is to be same in the equilibrium system so load on the brass is equals to load on the steel now what is load on the brass sigma a b multiplied by a b equals to sigma s into a s also we know that actual expansion of steel is equals to what actual expansion of brass okay we also know that actual expansion of steel is equals to actual expansion of brass equation one we will consider temperature stresses but actual expansion of steel is equals to free expansion of steel plus expansion due to tensile stress in the steel that is this part alpha s t l this is the free expansion alpha l t or l alpha t that is alpha s t l plus sigma s upon e s into l is the expansion due to tensile stress okay actual expansion of brass is same free expansion of brass plus contraction compression is there contraction due to compressive stress induced in the brass that is in the minus section this plus will be becoming compressive as the minus sign so this turns into minus sign okay so alpha b t l minus of sigma b by e b into l substituting these values equal into equation 1 that is the equation actual expansion of steel equals to actual expansion of brass so we can see alpha s t l plus sigma s by e s into l is equals to alpha b t l minus sigma b by e b into l so we can see some parts we are going to get the similar values so we are going to get cross them and remaining part is only thing alpha s t what temperature steel is taking we don't know sigma s upon e s alpha b t minus sigma b by e b so length is getting cancelled in both the side of the terms where t is rise in temperature thank you see you in the next video hope you have understood please go through the derivations